It's Men's Health Week, so with that in mind, the Informer has decided to bring in a specialist to talk about not only a terrific new platform and a, and a great idea for tomorrow that's available today, but to also discover what some of our medical professionals are thinking and doing and how they want to take medicine to the next platform. His name is Brendan O'Brien, he's a neurosurgeon. Uh, you have been for an awful long time. Welcome to The Informer. Thank you. And I want you to take me uh, uh, to talk about this new biotechnology company. That I, Was it a moment of serendipity? Was it a moment of clarity that a year or so ago you started thinking about it? The Creative Thinking Institute. This is what you, you've come up with. How did it come? What was the catalyst? So George, working in neurosurgery and neurosciences, we're very familiar with the advances of technology and how it can be brought into the operating theatre and assist us on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, the early forays into robotic surgery or image-guided techniques. We're very uh, comfortable and able to avail ourselves and utilise uh, technology that helps us. So as we sit at the beginning of this next decade where the Internet of Things and the Internet of Medical Things is becoming uh, more surrounded... Uh, in more our, inclusive, in, more holistic, yeah, yeah. Everywhere we look, and it's only going to increase with 5G and, and greater digital uh, communication. Well, we felt that there was an opportunity to take these aspects, take technological, digital revolution that we, we are all in and use that to help people maximise their own daily performance, whether it be at home, at work, so that they felt that they were able to navigate the multifaceted issues that we all face on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and a stressful, take the stress out or try and de-stress our lives. Uh, give us a, a window or a mirror to look into? Uh, was that the idea? Exactly. We were trying to give people tools that empowered them so they could access at their own time, in their own privacy, which gave them reflective information of what was happening to their uh, resting heart rate and their sleep uh, data. So this is beyond the Fitbit and other technology. This is another layer using all of that stuff and more. That's right. So we're, we're partnering in, in a a holistic way yep. to take biosensors which obtain all of this information but adding it to uh, a psychological platform that oh, wow. really watches an individual from day to day, mm -hmm. interfaces with them. So for instance if you're at work and something happens with a colleague or there's a, a new project that's just not going right and mm. we all have a pressure to deliver and um, you know with this agile iterative yeah. uh, management cycle we're in we're certainly under an increasing amount of pressure. Well, we want to be able to show people how that they are responding in this stressful environment mm. and so that they can see how their performance changes. Yeah, and watch their cortisol levels rise beyond those levels that are considered safe and fair. Um, it's exciting this because we're right in the middle of a pandemic. We're talking about Men's Health Week, but also talking about living through something we've never lived through, no one's lived through before, uh, a worldwide pandemic, yeah? Uh, and the extraordinary thing is that we, we, there are so many things we don't know about COVID-19. And in Victoria, we're, in the, we're recording this in, the, in Victoria at the moment, and we're having to reset and go back a couple of steps in order to go forward. So this is an amazing uh, time to fast track people to use technology like, or embrace technology like never before. So your timing is just about on par. It may well be ahead of the game actually. Well I think that the uptake that we've all had to pursue with uh, working from home, working remotely, still, yeah. still being yeah. productive, yes we certainly see that Different models, and particularly in healthcare, different models that are decentralised mm -hmm. allow people to have access to important information at a place that's not in a doctor's surgery or not in a hospital outpatient clinic. We want to be able, in a decentralised way, give people information that's relevant to them, that they can make decisions 
and plan their own family and work life cycle mm. at a more time more of their choosing. being encouraged to, to take control of that because uh, many of us have given our careers a huge um, dose of our time and our passion and our energy, which is understandable, but it's come at a cost. So you're saying you can bring some of that uh, control back. And I, I'm thinking also, you're able to access so many of the allied pro medical professionals uh, with this technology. Let's talk about that. This, uh, this platform is available to everyone who's within the uh, purview of the, uh, of the program to view what's happening, to, to monitor your current uh, health uh, and what it's doing. That's right. So the, one of the most central aspects of any health platform in this day and age is, is security. Yeah, so, okay. so what we've tried to do is build a platform that had privacy by design. <laughs> so okay. from, from the ground from up. From the DNA on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So with the development house working on this project, we've said we want to have the highest level of security so that an individual needs to use, for instance, two-factor authentication, yeah. double encryption on transfer, and that also the way we're asking them information, we're not interested in things like their surname. Mm. We're not interested in their date of birth. Right. We want to see them as an individual who controls their information, but we are just giving them back okay. aspects of, of themselves. Yeah, so mentorship, yeah, in some yeah. respects, rather than uh, ownership. So you, you don't have, uh, if you're not using names, if you're not using, how are you, uh, aware as to who you're treating. So what happens is that any person who comes onto the platform, when that data is then encrypted and taken to the cloud, mm. they are given an ID number, a Google ID identification number, and that is how they are represented. And these information silos are kept separate. Very good. So databases are kept in different areas, all in the country where they've originated, so that they can't be reverse engineered. Um, I notice also, the, you, you say you deliver this privately to the individual through their, their mobile and web-based applications. So uh, are we, can I use my iPhone to engage with the platform? Yes, so you can use your iPhone or Android. My, my, my uh, uh, laptop and whatever. That's right. So you've got the facility to do it at home in your study or anywhere. You might be uh, going to and from work and you just check in to uh, get some of your latest statistics. But it's a place where we're trying to have it all available just at the end of a button. Now that's interesting but the point I want to know, know is well, there's so much technology that surrounds us every day. Um, this platform that you've created that with biomarkers, with, uh, with monitoring of, of, our, of, our, of our stress levels and this, that and the other, it's all very exciting and extraordinarily appealing. But how easy is it for me, for example, to monitor? Mm. Now you're the, the medical professional, I'm not. Mm. How do I know what to look for when I see the program unveil itself like a mirror in front of me? That's right. Well, we're trying to simplify the way we present the data. So, for instance, we are using the inputs to create fairly simple outputs. So, okay. so that a so person. Are we talking colours? Are we talking. Graphs. Graphs. Okay. We're talking about graphs. And, for instance, one of the central graphs is a stress performance graph. So, the higher the performance level related to your stress. Yeah, easy to. We're asking people just to show us where you think you are uh -huh. on this graphical repre representation. And once they've done that, we're showing them what our data suggests. Now when there's disparity... So to stay within the parameters. True, but also the, when there's disparity between perceived and objective, uh -huh. then we start to see the research and the discussion. So we can show people, you feel that you're in this position, but how about how you have a think about this? Mm -hmm. So this brings self-awareness, this brings ability to self-regulate, it gives us greater sense of control over where we are interfacing with our family, friends and work.